East San Antonio, Texas today with Attorney General Greg Abbott. Exciting announcement that you're going to be running for the next governor of the state of Texas. And welcome back to the Texas GOP vote. It's great to talk to you again. Great to be back with you again. Great to be here in San Antonio to announce that I'm running to be the next governor for the state of Texas. General, I've heard you say many, many times that you have the best job in the world right now. You go to work every day, you sue President Obama, and you go back home. Why would you give that up to become the governor and, and move forward on that? Well, as the Attorney General, I've literally been the general on the battlefield and fighting against an overreaching federal government, fighting to protect our liberty. I'm now seeking to move from being the general on the battlefield to being the commander-in-chief, leading that effort throughout the entire state, working with the next Attorney General, but also working with the state agencies. It could be Health and Human Services on pushing back against the Medicaid expansion trying to be enforced from Washington, D.C. It could be working with Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to push back against the overreaching EPA that's trying to crush jobs in the state of Texas. It could be continuing to lead our efforts to prevent laws coming to Texas that deny our Second Amendment rights like what we're seeing in some other states. But I will continue that fight against threats to our liberty from the commander-in-chief position as governor for the state of Texas. Now, you've always been a, a big leader in lawsuit reform and in positive business of our Texas is the best state in the nation, the most conservative state, but yet the best state in the nation for business and opportunity. With all the growth in, infra in uh, population, there's going to be a tremendous demand for infrastructure, highways, water. How do we proceed forward from a fiscally responsible standpoint to meet the economic needs of the state? What we have to do is set priorities. We have to put strict limits on what our spending will be so we don't bust our budget. We can't go down the pathway of California or Illinois uh, or Washington, D.C. Texas will only remain an economic leader if we have strict controls on our budget. Then when you do that, you set priorities. And as you noted, because of our growing population base, everyone sees our declining water table. Everyone sees our roads more congested. Everyone sees that we need to improve schools. What you do is say, these are my priorities. We fund these priorities first, and then if we have to make cutbacks in other places, that's what we have to do. So we're able to achieve these challenges and address these challenges, not by spending more, but by right-sizing government and making cuts. Work. General, I mentioned lawsuit reform earlier, Texas for lawsuit reform, citizens against lawsuit abuse, and now uh, Congressman Lamar Smith has introduced federal legislation to try to reduce lawsuit abuse. How has that affected Texas in the business economy, and what have you heard all this? Well, if you, if you go back 15 or 20 years, Texas was known as the litigation capital of the world. It was crushing the business here. Companies were leaving the state of Texas, taking the jobs with them because of reforms brought in part by Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse, by Texas for Lawsuit Reform. The Texas economy has changed, and now businesses are relocating to Texas because we have a more pro-business litigation environment. I think it's right for the United States economy, for Lamar Smith, to be taking up that reform to the United States of America. Texas has shown the way to create jobs. Lamar Smith is showing the rest of the country what the Texas model looks like and what it can do for the entire country. Now, last week, you were in Austin at the pro-life rally as Texas passed its historic legislation. In Houston, we have a doctor that, from what I've been told, is even much more horrific than what happened in, in the Northeast. Tell us what will happen here in Texas with that and, and where we move forward. Will you be defending the, the new bill that just passed? Well, uh, the, the new bill that just passed uh, that protects more life in the state of Texas is now moving from the state house to the courthouse. And I will be the leader in defending that bill. Just as I have been the leader in defending so many pieces of legislation that have been passed that protected life. I was the national leader for the states in protecting the partial birth abortion ban. The national leader for the states in pr protecting parental notification. The state leader, of course, uh, in protecting so many of the pro-life laws that have passed on the state legislature over the past couple of years. I will be there once again in the courthouse defending this legislation. Texas has always been the energy capital of the United States, and with what's going on now with the Eagle Court Shale, where do you see us going in terms of regulation, getting the federal government off of our backs so that we can actually maximize the return for Texas people on, on the energy benefits of Texas? You know, it's funny because Texas is and always has been the energy leader in this nation. I saw a story this last week where 
if Texas were in its own independent nation, we'd be like the eighth or ninth largest producer of oil in the entire world. We may produce more oil than many OPEC countries. And we must remain energy independent. That's better for our economy, better for our security. We will not allow the federal government to trample on our independence, whether it be energy independence or any other kind of independence. And therefore, we will continue our fight against the overreaching policies of Obama's EPA. There have been rumors that Obama may try to crack down on fracking somewhere. We're not going to let that happen. I've had three victories in court against Obama's overreaching EPA in just the last 18 months or so. And we will be back in court again if we're forced to if the Obama administration tries to crush jobs in Texas. Well, General, this has been an exciting day for Texas. I want to congratulate you and thank you for the service that you've given to the state and what you're planning to do in the future. I hope we can sit down with you again as you go through the campaign and drill down deeper into some of these issues and talk about what's in the future for Texas. I look forward to visiting with you and, and with all voters across the state of Texas. I will be crossing the state of Texas over the coming weeks and months. For the next 16 months, I'll be taking my case directly to the voters to explain to you why I represent the liberty that we all need in this state to keep us fighting against Washington, D.C., keep us fighting for the values that made the United States of America and the state of Texas the best place to live and raise a family. I'm on your side. You can count on it.